Well, shalom and welcome back. We're continuing to look at the Kitsur Shulchan Oruk. Uh, it's been a little while, but we're back. And we're up to Siman 2, if you remember, uh, which is the laws of mourning the Telat Yadayim, which is the washing of hands. And this Siman is made up of nine Sefa'im, which is, means there's nine segments in this Siman that deal with the laws of ritually washing one's hands in the morning. Uh, and the, the breakup of the different subjects are the reasons for the morning Natalit Yadayim, donning the Zitzit, that is the Zitzit Katan, that is the small Zitzit one wears under their daily garments, uh, procedure of the morning Natalit Yadayim, cases of doubt, other activities that obligate Natalit Yadayim. And so it starts off with the introduction a person is obligated to wash his hands upon awakening in the morning. The laws and procedures that are particular to this Natalit Yadayim, the washing of hands, are set forth in this Saman. Before we get started, I think it's important to just mention, uh, in case any of you are wondering, uh, is a Noahide uh, permitted to ritually wash his hands in the morning? And the short answer is no, but there is a caveat to that. And the caveat is that there are two types of Noahides. There is the uh, righteous uh, Gentile, who is somebody who's just generally a righteous person. And there is a, a Noahide who is on a journey, and that journey consists of three stages, which is the Ger Tashav, which is the returning Gentile, and then there is the Ger Hashar, which is the Gentile near the gate, and then there is the Ger Zedek, which is the righteous Gentile. And this is a more serious type of Noahide that perhaps one day is yearning for the opportunity to become as observant as he possibly can. Um, but it's very important if somebody is in this stage uh, that they go out of their way to, to make some sort of distinction between them and somebody who's um, an Orthodox Jew or a Baal Tshuva, that is um, a biological uh, Jewish male who hasn't been observant but is returning to observance. Um, it's very important to make that distinction, otherwise it opens up uh, uh, difficult areas, grey areas in that uh, one could be misconstrued uh, in of starting a new religion uh, or they could inadvertently cause a particular mitzvah to be dumbed down in, in, a, in its observance. So we, we have to be very careful of that. Um, so I just thought I would get that out of the way in case anybody's wondering about these things. But if somebody is a, a serious uh, Noahide, and in the, they're in the three stage, states of a returning Gentile, stages of a returning Gentile, um, then it's very important for them to, to study uh, and, and be abreast of a lot of these laws of daily living um, if their intention is to become a, as observant as they possibly can. Um, but the two Noahides that I've described, one of them is not part of the nation and another, another type is is part of the nation in their capacity um, in that you have a slave that is uh, observant to certain mitzvot that an orthodox jewish male um, he's more observant than a slave obviously uh, uh, that belongs to an orthodox jew and then there's the observances of an orthodox jewish woman uh, and her uh, torah obligations that she observes are different again from the slave and from the the ultra orthodox jewish male so it, it all comes down to you fulfilling your particular purpose within the Torah. So let's get into it. Because a person upon arising from his bed in the morning is as if he has been created anew for the purpose of serving his creator, may his name be blessed. He must therefore sanctify himself by washing his hands with water from a utensil. In this, he is similar to a Kohen who would sanctify his hands daily from the Kiyor, which is the laver prior to performing his temple service. Um, see the footnote for that. Just as the Kohen washes from a utensil, so should this washing be done with a utensil. Now, here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, this is quite a nice one. A um, little bit on the pricey side. You don't have to get one as nice as this. Uh, you can actually pick up plastic ones that are a lot cheaper. But it's important that they have the feature of having the two handles so that when your unclean hands come to grasp uh, each handle, they have a handle of their own. So uh, whereas if there was one handle, 
then when one hand would be clean, the other unclean hand would be grasping the handle and that would recontaminate the hand. And we're talking about spir spiritual contamination here, uh, not, um, not physical contamination, because to cleanse oneself from that, you would use warm water and soap and wash your hands for 20 seconds, uh, which we all now know about since we've all been a part of the COVID thing. Um, so there it is. There's the little uh, utensil that you can use. Um, if you would like to have uh, a basin, you can get yourself a basin, but you can just do it over a sink. Uh, but it's important that you use a utensil to pour the water over your hands rather than from a faucet, as is important that, which we're going to see as we go through, it's important that you, you mechanically have pour the water over rather than actually be coming out through the pressure in the tap. Um, but it does, it does look at that briefly in this Saman, and we'll get to that. Okay. While this morning hand washing is a rabbinic enactment, there is scriptural support for this washing. As the verse states in Tehillim 26, 6 through 7, I will wash in cleanliness my hands and circle around your altar Hashem to proclaim thanksgiving in, in a loud voice, etc., uh, there is another reason for this washing, since during sleep, when one's holy soul has departed from his body, a spirit of impurity, a ruach ra'ah, comes and rests on his body. Now, when he awakens from his sleep, this impure spirit departs from his whole body, except for his fingers, from which it does not depart until he pours water upon them three times in an alternate, in an alternating, in an alternating fashion. Now, I like to pour the water on each hand five times. And um, I like to do five times because it represents the five uh, books of the Torah. But the minimal amount is three times in an alternating fashion. Um, and this has the uh, capacity to remove any remnants of the Ruach Ra'ah, which mainly rests upon the fingers particularly around the edges of the fingernail. Um, in cases of uh, people who have been afflicted by a dibuk, that is, uh, people who have been possessed by a ruach ra'ah, an unclean spirit, um, the entry point and the exit point of the unclean spirit can be through the fingernails. Um, that They find some sort of small opening uh, in the fingernail area. Um, all right, so let's continue. Uh, now, when one awakens from sleep, his impure spirit departs from his whole body, except from his fingers. Uh, it is prohibited to it is it is prohibited to walk because we already read that part. Uh, it is prohibited to walk for Amos without washing one's hands in the morning, except in cases of extreme necessity. If one has to really go to the toilet, um, a lot of older men, when they wake up in the morning. They really need to go to the toilet. It's quite okay for you to go to the toilet first, um, see to your bodily needs, and then uh, partake of the natalit yadayim. Um, you know, you, you're not, <laughs> you're not, you're okay if you need to go to the toilet first. But it's very important that you take a minimal amount of steps before you uh, you partake of the a ritual washing of hands. Uh, some some people have the the wash basin and the the uh, laver uh, right near the bed, ready to go in the morning with the. I don't know if I brought that. Oh, I did um, with the little towel. That's that's a little towel you can pick up, um, and they're ready to go. They, they don't their feet don't don't even touch the ground by the time they they wash their hands. Some really pious people choose to do that. Do whatever you can maintain. Don't start out with all the gusto in the world and then and then drop off. Do what you know you can maintain. For the first couple of weeks, you might be so enthusiastic and have it near your bed. Um, maybe you, you might knock it over during sleep or something, and um, you know your wife's not going to be too happy about that, or, or or the you know maybe the the cat will knock it over or something like that. But just be reasonable with yourself and don't. Um, don't go beyond what you know you can't maintain. Okay, so number two, uh, Safim number two, 
the first garment that one should put on uh, should be a talit katan, that is the, the small talit that the men wear under their regular shirts. However, since he puts on the zitzit prior to the netelat yadayim, and therefore his hands are not yet clean, he should not recite the blessing upon the zitzit at that time. Number three, the procedure for the morning netelat yadayim is as follows. One takes the utensil filled with the water with his right hand and transfer it, transfers it to his left hand. He then pours the water first onto his right hand. After, he, after this, he takes the utensil filled with water with his right hand and pours the water onto his left hand. And he should do this three times. It is proper to wash the hands until the wrist. However, in a pressing situation, it is sufficient to wash until the knuckles that join the fingers to the palm of the hand. Now, the question that some of you may be thinking is what about Yom Kippur, where one is to refrain from, um, you know, refrain from from bathing uh, for pleasure? I think that I think you, you will read um, the halakha for that. I believe is that you can wash up to the knuckles uh, uh, on Yom Kippur, um, certainly uh, for the purposes of, of hygiene. Uh, one should also wash his face in the morning in honor of his Creator. As the verse states in Bereshit 9.6, For in the form of Elohim he made man, he should also rinse out his mouth because of the stale saliva that builds up inside it overnight, since one must utter the great name of Hashem with holiness and purity. After, after he should dry his hands, after washing his face, and he should take care to dry his face well. One must wash his hands in such a manner that the water falls into the utensil, i.e. the basin. It is forbidden to benefit from the water used for washing, for the for a ruach ra'a, a spirit of impurity, rests upon these waters. For this reason, when discarding water, one should pour it out in a place where people do not walk. Uh, prior to washing one's hands in the morning, one should refrain from touching any orifice of the body. Thus, he should not touch his mouth, nor his nostrils, nor his eyes nor his ears, nor his rectum, nor should he touch food, nor the puncture wound from a bloodletting, which gives you an idea of when this was originally originally written. Uh, because the Ruach Ra'ah that rests on the hands before washing them can cause harm to these things. So any type of, of wound, um, you know, minor wound that you, you have, maybe you've had, had a Band-Aid on it during the evening, during the night, during the sleep, and it's come off. Um, you know, you, you, you don't know wh what your hands get up to when you're asleep. Uh, so number six, it is proper to be scrupulous when washing in the morning in the Yadayim with regard to the laws pertaining to the utensil that is used, with regard to the amount and type of water used, and that the water should pour onto the hands through human force. And I, I briefly mentioned that earlier. Similar to the laws of the of Natalit Yadayim for a meal, um, see Saman 40, which is a fair way in. Uh, we'll get there eventually, Hashem willing. However, in pressing circumstances, when he does not have the proper conditions available to him and he wishes to pray, he may wash his hands with water from any utensil and with any type of water and without human force. So there's obviously, you know, if, if all the means aren't at one's disposal, there are uh, other options that are available to a person rather than following what we have here. But I mean, if a person has any amount of time and, and, and resources and means, you know, they should be able to adhere to what is, is, uh, is presented here in this Shulchan Oruk, uh, the Kitsu Shulchan Oruk. Uh, regarding washing of hands upon this washing, okay. And without human force, and he may still recite the blessing of the Talmudim regarding washing of hands upon this washing. Uh, if there is a river nearby, it is better that he dip his hands into the water three times, or even in snow. However, if he does not have any water available at all, he should wipe his hands with something, and he should recite Al Nekiyot Yadayim regarding the cleanliness of hands instead of the usual blessing of the Natal Yadayim. Uh, and this is sufficient with regard to his requirement of washing for prayers, uh, but not sufficient to remove the Ruach Ra'ah. Later, when water and suitable utensils become available to him, he should wash his hands again, this time in the proper manner, 
but he should not recite another blessing. Okay, so number seven, as it is written in Tehillim 103.1, Bless Hashem, O my soul, and let all my innermost being bless his holy name. Uh, since a person must bless Hashem with the participation of all his inner organs, it is forbidden to recite any blessing until he has cleansed his inner organs of excrement and urine. In the morning when one, when one arises, one usually must attend to his needs or at least to urinate. Therefore, he should not recite the blessing of al Natal Yadayim at the time that he washes his hands until after he has cleansed himself. There you go. After receiving, after relieving himself, he should wash his hands a second time and then re recite the blessing of al Natal Yadayim and the blessing of Asha Yetza, that is the uh, blessing that one says after uh, seeing to the body's needs. And he should wash his hands a second time and then recite the blessing of the al Natal Yadayim. Oh, sorry, I just read the same line. Uh, the blessing over Torah study uh, and the blessing of, of the Elohoi Neshama, my Elohim, the soul you place within me, etc. Uh, number eight. We have learned above, save one, that the requirement to wash one's hands upon awakening was enacted as an inauguration to the day service of Hashem. As a Kohen washes his hands prior to his service in the temple, this is the reason offered by the Rashba, according to Responsa 1191, and Rosh in Pesel Kim Berakot 923, however, offers a different reason for this requirement. When a person sleeps, his hands move about and inevitably touch parts of the body that are unclean. In his view, the sages enact the morning Natal Yadayim to ensure that one would have clean hands for prayer. The Halakha recognizes both the reason of the Rashba and, and that of the Rosh. Thus, the blessing of the Natal Yadayim is recited only when both reasons for washing apply. In addition, as we have learned, there is also an obligation to wash the hands so as to remove the Ruach Ra'a, the unclean spirit, from them. Uh, however, this reason alone does not warrant the recitation of the blessing. This safe discusses four situations in which one is required to wash his hands, but for the reasons outlined above, does not recite the blessing of the Natala Jadayim. If one awakened and washed his hands while, he is still, while it is still night, as the Halakha dictates, and then remained awake until daybreak, or if after awakening and washing his hands, he returned, he returned to sleep a second time while it was still night, Likewise, one who slept during the day for 60 breaths, which is approximately half an hour. Thank you for that. Likewise, one who remained awake the entire night and did not sleep for 60 breaths. That is half an hour. Uh, in all these cases, there is a question whether he must wash his hands or not. Therefore, he should wash his hands in the usual manner of the morning Natal Jadayim, i.e. three times each in an alter alternating fashion as described in, in Safe 3. Uh, but he should not recite a blessing upon washing. Uh, number nine, this is the final safe in this saman. Uh, this safe contains a list of activities that render the hands unclean, and thus a person engaging in these activities must clean his hands before studying Torah or praying. In addition, most of his activities also cause a ruach ra'ah ruach ra, ruach ra, ruach ra to rest upon the hands, and therefore he must, therefore they must be washed without delay to remove it. Uh, performing any of the following activities requires one who engages in them to wash his hands with water. Uh, one who arises from, from bed, leaves a lavatory or a bathhouse, cuts his nails, cuts his hair, takes off his shoes, engages in marital relations, touches a louse, delouses a garment, even if he did not touch a louse, scratches his head, and touches his body in places that are usually covered, uh, leaves or leaves a cemetery. Uh, attends a funeral or, or enters into a covered area in which there is a dead person and one who has undergone bloodletting. There it is again. Um, so there it is. We've finished another Siman of the Kids in Shulchan Oruk. Um, if you have any questions or want to add anything to, to what I've put in uh, this video today, please do so. Um, it's absolutely fascinating subject. Uh, you might be thinking, thinking to yourself, well, if a Noahide isn't obligated to, to wash his hands ritually, then does a Ruach Ra'ah settle upon his hands, and then is he stuck with the Ruach Ra'ah, the unclean spirit, for the rest of the day? 
And the answer to that, without looking into it, if somebody has that as a genuine answer, I can maybe go back and research it and answer it in the comments, is that as somebody who is uh, Torah observant, let's say an Orthodox Jew, uh, they are like a, a pot of honey to, to an ant, uh, in that the ants or the flies are drawn to the honey. And so the honey is like the Torah. And so you're not likely to have to worry about a Ruach Ra'ah if you're somebody who is a Noahide so much as an Orthodox Jew once he enters the ward of sleep. Because once a person enters the ward of sleep, they're, they're vulnerable, uh, they're not in control, and they, they for all intents and purposes, they, they are uh, in a state that is a 1 60th of being dead. Um, and so they're helpless in that state and the, the unclean spirits will squat on them, so to speak, um, and leave residue and in some cases stay there after they awaken. And it is the washing of hands three times, uh, as we've discussed, that removes them. Um, that's the best answer I can give just off the cuff uh, from what I've looked at in the past. If that is a genuine, <laughs> if that is a genuine question, uh, let me know and I'll go back and have a bit more of a look. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. And it's such a privilege uh, to be able to put out a video um, which uh, looks at such an amazing series of books. Make sure you go out and grab all five copies of the Kids of Shock and Auric just to have in your home because I, I find them consummately fascinating because it looks at Torah observance on a, on a daily uh, a, a day a day by day breakdown moment by moment on a daily basis which um, you don't hear much about um, and of course you don't you won't see that you, you know you won't see people talk about how they love the Torah and they want to follow the Torah um, and the Torah really is something that we do from moment to moment not from Shabbat to Shabbat uh, anyway I'm I'm rambling now thanks so much for joining me bye for now